Hey guys, I'm Ruby and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my story with ulcerative colitis. I'll be going through what I went through specifically, symptoms I went through, treatment and medicine options, what you should and shouldn't do during Clara, all of that stuff. Also, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. So let's get started. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis back in September of 2020. I had symptoms for over a year. We just could not figure out what it was. <clears throat> Bad doctors. <clears throat> so if you don't know what ulcerative colitis is, it's an autoimmune disease. Your immune system thinks that there's an infection or a virus in your digestive system. So it constantly is attacking that infection that's not actually there, but it ends up actually really hurting your intestines and your colon. It can cause lots of ulcers, hence the name ulcerative colitis, and lots of bad side effects that just aren't fun. So I have always had issues with my digestive system. The first time I noticed it was when I was in seventh grade. I had to get an emergency enema twice. I didn't really think anything of it. Definitely was not fun. So then I went throughout high school after that, no problems. And then around my sophomore year, end of sophomore year, I started to notice that I was having diarrhea every single day. At first, this was definitely weird. But then as it kept going, I guess I just got used to it because I didn't think anything of it. And looking back, I'm like, why did I not think something was wrong? So that was going on for a while. The next thing I noticed was that I started having a lot of blood. Yeah, I knew that this wasn't normal. So I went to my mom about it. She said, sometimes it's normal to get blood, but wait a week and if it's still there, we're gonna have to see a doctor. And I was like, okay, cool. I guess I forgot. I just got used to it, like the diarrhea. I don't know, but I never went back to my mom about it and I honestly really should have. I started having blood in my soul every day for months. And at the time I wasn't in pain, so I guess that's why I didn't really do anything about it because I'm like, oh, I feel fine. Yeah, no. The next thing that happened was I did start feeling some pain in my abdomen. Ab I did start feeling some pain in my abdomen one time. It was so bad that we went to the ER. They ran a bunch of tests, couldn't find anything, so they pretty much just gave me painkillers, sent me home. But they did recommend I see a specialist called a gastroenterologist who specializes in digestive system. We ended up going to see the gastroenterologist that they recommended, which was through the same company as that hospital. So we went to see him. Hmm, I'm gonna use careful words when talking about this guy. Well, he gave me laxatives, over-the-counter laxatives as a fix. Yeah, that didn't work out great. And I ended up actually taking it because, you know, he's a gastroenterologist, he's a specialist. Made it much worse. So I ended up just stop using that because it didn't do anything. We ended up going to the ER once more again because I had the same stomach pain, same thing. They took tests, got no information back, just gave me painkillers, sent me home. Went back to the specialist again. He started saying, you know, maybe we should do a colonoscopy, but it's an invasive procedure and you're young, so I really don't want to do that. I looked at him and I was like, I'm in pain. I have blood every day. Like, this is not normal. And then he goes, okay, yeah, let's do a colonoscopy. I scheduled the colonoscopy with him. And so that was like the third time I went and saw him, third or fourth time. We scheduled the colonoscopy and then wonderful COVID-19 hit, so we had to cancel it. And then during February of 2020, I got really sick with a flu. It might have been coronavirus, honestly, no clue. And this gave me a very bad flare. I was in pain, like every time I went to the bathroom, like yelling, because it was so painful. And eventually, it kind of just ended fading away and I forgot about it. I was also taking ibuprofen and acetaminophen and at the time it was working for the pain, but I was taking a lot of that stuff, which isn't good. So fast forward to August of 2020, it was the day before I moved into college. I started getting really bad stomach pain. Hence, I hadn't had that really bad abdominal pain since I was sick back in like February, March time. And, and my mom's like, it's probably nerves. I'm like, yeah, she's probably right. Like I'm moving to college tomorrow. Then it was the day that I moved into college, so painful that I was laying on the floor of my house, 
before we left. We ended up coming to my college, moving all my stuff in, getting in my dorm. Then the whole day went on and the stomach pain did not go away. And I was taking acetaminophen, I was taking ibuprofen and nothing was working. It hurt so bad, could not eat, had no appetite. Keep in mind, I've also lost 10 pounds from where I have been literally for the last three years of my life. So my parents end up leaving college. I literally spend the whole night on the floor, curled up in a ball, just crying because it was so painful. The next day rolls around and it was excruciatingly painful. My boyfriend, who goes to the same college as I do, drove me all the way back home two and a half hours to go to my physician. Turns out they were closed. Wonderful. We ended up going to the ER, the same ER that I've been going to every time where they find nothing. And of course, they find nothing. Give me more painkillers and send me home. I ended up going back to college. This is where it just started getting really bad. I was losing weight like crazy. I was going to the bathroom 20 plus times a day. I was so dehydrated. I could barely walk around. It was just, I was just sick all the time. It was terrible. So I had a lot of doctor's visits. Like every weekend I was going home for a doctor's visit or a checkup or something. One time I went home for a doctor's appointment. I had to stop four times on the way home and each stop was like 30 minutes. I would just stop at a gas station and just go to the bathroom for like 40 minutes. I ended up getting to my doctor's office. I walked in like hunched over grabbing my stomach and she's like, oh honey. And I was like, yeah, I'm in a lot of pain. I literally was waking up five times in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Awful. She ends up sending me to an ER at a different hospital than the one I've been going to. Thank you so much, Rose. So I go to this ER. They schedule me a colonoscopy the next week. Super amazing. Go back to college again, come back, and I go to my colonoscopy. And I remember just waking up and seeing the doctor standing in front of me, and he goes, it looks really bad in there. So we're diagnosing you with severe ulcerative colitis. And I was like, man. <laughs> but after the colonoscopy, they prescribed me prednisone, which is a steroid, which pretty much suppresses your immune system from working. So that way it's not attacking your digestive system. This isn't a long-term medicine though, because your body can become very dependent of it. So I was gonna be on it for about two months. It was just like an oral pill version. So they sent me home with this prednisone. I take it as told to for one week. It was not working. I would feel better for about an hour and then it would just go right back to it. I ended up like losing even more weight. I was throwing up every morning, dry heaving, could not walk, just sleeping on the bathroom floor so I could go right to the toilet when I needed to. Just awful. I had an appointment with my doctor. He's like, how's the medicine working? I said, I mean, it works for like an hour and then I just go back to normal. And he said, you need to get admitted to the hospital right now. Turns out my intestines were so inflamed and just destroyed that they were not absorbing the medicine correctly, which was why it was not helping. So I ended up getting admitted to the hospital for two weeks so they could give me the IV version of the steroid. I also had to get a blood transfusion. They also started me on the long-term medicine for an autoimmune disease, which is an infusion of Inflectra is what the medicine was called. They started me on that as well. Once I got out of the hospital, I weighed 90 pounds. I normally weigh 125. I couldn't walk very well, could barely get upstairs. It took a lot of effort. I'd be so wiped out. I was sleeping all the time. Luckily, the medicine I was on, the prednisone, finally kicked in. I started healing. The prednisone did have some wild side effects, but it was well worth it because it really, really helped my disease calm down. It got rid of my flare that was terrible. So I was on the prednisone for two months and then they finally weaned me off of it. And I've been having my infusions ever since. And so far I have not had a flare up since October of 2020. So that is my story with my ulcerative colitis. I've been lucky enough that we got it figured out before it turned very, very bad. I was in pretty bad shape there for a while though, but I'm much healthier now. I work out every day. I can eat pretty much whatever I want. And I'm just really glad that I got sent to the new doctors because those other doctors, <sighs> So I already kind of talked about some symptoms of ulcerative colitis. So now I'm gonna go into a little bit more depth of what the symptoms could be. So definitely one of the most common symptoms is diarrhea constantly. 
and blood in the stool. Those are probably two of the most common symptoms that I've read about and I've experienced them myself. Another symptom is weight loss and lack of appetite. That's something I also experienced. I definitely noticed the weight loss before the lack of appetite, but they did go hand in hand. The next thing is another big one, and that's the abdominal pain, which I experienced for about a year before I got my diagnosis. The abdominal pain, it kind of feels like a cramping, but it's more of a sharp cramping rather than just like a tense, muscle clenching cramping. It feels like kind of getting stabbed in the gut. Another side effect is fatigue, just feeling really tired all the time, no motivation to do anything. Also going to the bathroom a lot throughout the day. I was definitely going to the bathroom 20 plus times a day when it got really bad. There's also a side effect called tenesmus, which is the feeling of having to go to the bathroom when you already just went. And this one is probably my least favorite side effect. I would go to the bathroom every 10 minutes and I would get that really uncomfortable, urgent feeling like I need to go, but I know I just went like four times in the last hour because you couldn't just sit down and do something. You constantly were getting up and going to the bathroom. The next side effect is vomiting or nausea. For me personally, I experienced a lot of nausea. I don't normally throw up very often. However, I did throw up a couple times. I was mainly dry heaving, however, when it got really bad. Of course, there are a lot more side effects that I'm not gonna talk about. I'm just talking about the main ones that I read are very common and the ones that I experienced. So now I'm gonna talk about what foods you should and should not eat during a flare-up just in general what foods are bad for ulcerative colitis. So before I got diagnosed, I thought, oh, since I'm having digestive issues, I should eat completely healthy. I was having raw fruits and vegetables every day. I was eating whole wheat bread. I was eating nuts and seeds lots of protein, stuff like that. And I met with a dietitian when I was admitted into the hospital. That's the exact opposite of what you're supposed to eat when you have ulcerative colitis. The reason being is because raw fruits and vegetables are actually hardest on your digestive system. So it actually makes it a lot worse. When you do have a flare up or ulcerative colitis, you're supposed to stick to white wheat. So white bread, white rice, white pasta, stuff like that. You wanna do whole wheat and stay away from heavy grain stuff, stay away from like high fiber cereal, stay away from nuts and seeds, raw fruits and vegetables. You want to stay away from all that. Do lots of carbs, chicken, seafood is okay. You can have fruits, but they have to be like melons, so like watermelons, cantaloupe. And then you can have vegetables if they're very, very cooked. So for instance, I would eat chicken noodle soup because it had carrots and celery, but they were cooked enough to where they were very soft and I could digest them easier. Some of the medication I was on, I already talked about the prednisone, which is the steroid. And then the inflectra is the infusion. It works kind of like the steroid where it still suppresses your immune system, just not as harsh. And it doesn't give you as bad a side effects as the prednisone does. Definitely the prednisone had some wacky side effects like I said earlier. For instance, makes you gain a lot of weight. Just good for me because I was super underweight at the time. It gives you this thing called moon face which makes your face circular. I will insert a picture of me with a moon face right here. <laughs> And it also makes you super energetic. Like you just wanna get up and do everything. It also makes you eat so much food. And like I said earlier, I'm on the Inflectra now, which is an infusion I get every eight weeks. There's also other medications called like Intivio and Humira. You might've seen those in commercials. Those are also used for Crohn's and UC. So that's my story about my diagnosis with ulcerative colitis. I just wanna let you know if anybody out there has UC or Crohn's or any chronic illness, really, you're not alone. There are other people out there that are going through the same thing as you. And luckily, there are people that love you and support you and that's really what got me through it is my friends and my family who supported me and loved me through this. If you have any questions feel free to comment below. I hope this helped you understand my disease a little better and maybe answer some questions that you had about yourself or a family member or a friend but thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.